Gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about three topics. That's right, we're going to be talking about three topics. The number one topic is a friend of mine who made millions of dollars using a crypto watch product. That's right, he calls it the crypto watch product. That's right. Our second topic is a watch market update. We're going to have a watch market update today. Big one, big, big watch market update. And our third topic is watch consignment. I talked about that last week, but I have a couple of things that I want to finish off with you guys on watch consignment. But before I get into all that good stuff, let's go into my magical intro. So gentlemen, I'm back and we're going to be talking about my friend. I'm going to be telling you a story of a friend of mine's that has a jewelry store, a very humble jewelry store that I've known for the last 40 years. Good friend of mine, we do a lot of golfing together, we do a lot of tennis playing together, we talk about politics, family, and business. All that good stuff we do. And this is his story. He's a very humble man with this, his shop, his jewelry shop, and he's been doing this for 40 years. And he tells me a story that the money that he's made in the last 10 years, he has not, never made, not even close, in the last 30 years of him being in this business. And he's telling me that he made that money selling a crypto watch. He calls this watch a crypto watch. It's the Richard Mill. He calls it the crypto Richard Mill watch. You know, the watch that uh, Generation X and millennials and crypto millionaires buy. He says that when he got introduced to this watch 13 years ago, somebody approached him and told him, do you want to make, you know, do you want to make home run money, grand slam money? Well, this is the watch you need to sell. It's the rich amount. So he, you know, 13, 15 years ago, you're just scratching your head. What is this guy talking about that I'm going to make home run grand slam money selling this watch that watch was the richard mill so you know the guy kept on talking to him about the watch about the watch remember this watch looks like a let's be honest guy this watch looks like you know a toy watch you know a toy watch you know a cheerios uh toy watch you know but he finally was convinced by this gentleman and he purchased his first richard mill he bought it for $60,000. He bought a Richard Mill for $60,000 and he flipped it for $120,000. My friend, you know, he sells, like I said, he has a, a jewelry shop and he sells loose diamonds, necklaces, bracelets, earrings, rings, anything that's to do with, with, with jewelry and watches. And he sold and he, he would never, he tells me, I mean, I've, I sold the best diamonds, you know, the best four C's in the diamond industry I, I sold and I never in my life made $60,000 and I made $60,000 profit on a crypto toy watch as he calls it and he was in shock he's telling me this story when we finished playing golf one day we sat in the pro shop and we had a couple of beers and he told me this story and I was pretty amazed hearing his story that he made so much money on a watch and he says to me, I, I couldn't believe that I made $60,000. So I did it again. And he tells me one, and I made money again. And I did it again, and I made money again. This is a person that, like I said again, living a humble life, driving an ES350 Lexus, and his wife driving a C-Class uh, Mercedes Benz. Lived a very comfortable life, very comfortable, very, very comfortable life. But he says that, you know, in, in the 40 years that he's been in his business, he's never made that kind of money ever and it was selling Richard Mill watches. So he did it again, he made money. He did it again, he made money. And I saw my friend from driving an ES350 to driving a Ferrari. And I saw his wife from driving a Mercedes-Benz C-Class driving to driving a Bentley, you know? So he, he started making money, he started making money. And he was telling me, this watch was unbelievable. This watch, this is why he says he calls it the crypto watch money watch it's the crypto money watch because every youngster at the he says at, at first it was more of the high society 
um, millionaires that wanted that watch. But then as crypto came in, it was more these young millionaire crypto millionaires that wanted this watch. And they were the ones that were buying this watch. They were the ones that were just, they wanted it. You know, the watch, he can get the watch for $140,000 and he can sell it for $240,000 and he's making a $100,000 profit. He was in shock. He says to me, it was like, he felt like I was in the, he, he says he, he felt like he was in the underworld, selling something in the underworld, you know, something that wasn't, uh, you know, uh, in the real, in the real, um, something that was, he felt like he was selling something illegal, but it was legal. He was selling a watch that was legal. It was the real thing. You know, it was, it wasn't no, um, um, how can I say it wasn't, um, he wasn't selling, uh, how can I say this? He, he wasn't selling, um, narcotics. He wasn't selling, uh, uh, um, uh, something that, uh, uh he just was, he was, was selling something real, something good, you know, something that was legit. And he was making, he couldn't believe that he was making that amount of money. He felt like, he, he says he felt like Tony Montana. He felt like Carlito's way, you know, Carlito's way. He that's how he felt because he was making so much money. So he kept on going and he says that, he says to me, Juan, I, there was a moment there that I was, I was making $200,000 on a watch. That's all I had to do. That's all I had to do. I mean, if I sold one of those watches in a month and I made $200,000 profit, I, I'm fine. He's telling me all this story. And I said, oh my God, for real? Let's call him Charlie, okay? For real, Charlie? He said, yeah. And I says, I'm, I'm making all this money. I'm, I'm making all this money. I'm, I'm making, you know, $200,000 a month. You figured out, figure that out from a little shop in a corner. This is this person telling me all this story. He says to me, and, and, I, and he says to me, and I gotta tell you, this watch is basically the same thing. To me, these watches are like brothers and brothers and, and nephews and, and, and grandparents. He compares it to the Hublot, you know? He says, the only problem with Hublot is that there's no meat left in the bone to make money. So that's why everybody, everybody just dogs the watch, Hublot, that is no good, that is no good, that is no good. But if you put them together, you know, right there at par, they're basically the same watches, you know? You know, they, he tells me that um, the Richard Mill, Richard Mill watches has this, this, you know, this, um, um, how can I call that, that uh, has this material. And, and uh, he says that, you know, that special material they call it, it has, and so, oh, you're talking about that they, they say it has the STD material. <laughs> you know, the STD, NTP, STP. I call it the STD, you know, the, the bad infection it has. But he says, you know, it has a special material. They call it the NTP and people go nuts with that. You know, it's, it's come on. You know, you, you look at the Richard Mill and you look at a Hugh Blood and it's basically, you know, they're, they're cousins, they're nephews, they're brothers, you know. Um, so, but nobody wants a Hublot because it's, it's basically a dog with fleas, you know? There's no meat left in the bone, so there's a lot of meat left in the Richard Mill, so that's why you see everybody promoting, you know? You know that guy, that, that chubby guy that looks like the penguin, you know? He looks like Danny DeVito, that he says he hates Hublot. Of course he hates Hublot. I would hate it too. There's no, there's no meat left in the bone to make money on that watch on Hublot. That's why everybody hates it. And he hates it and he screams, you know, he's kind of... He's kind of a little, he's kind of short and chubby and, and he screams, you know? Well, he says he hates Hublot, but he's right. He hates it for a reason because there's no money, there's no meat left in the bone to make money on that watch. That's why he hates it, you know? That's the guy, you know, from over there, somewhere, you know, real far. He says it all the time that he hates Hublot and he's right. He should hate it. There's no meat left in the bone to make money on that watch, the Hublot. So he hates it. And so he tells, my friend tells me that, that that's why everybody hates the, the Hublot. So, you know, I, I said, oh my God, so you made all that money. Yeah, I made all that money on Richard Mill. But there's a problem. Right now, Richard Mill is dead. Like you say, is dead in a backyard pool and floating face down. Can you imagine my friend is using my quote and telling me 
the richer male watches are dead in the backyard pool and floating face down like this. Unbelievable. My friend is telling me that. I can't tell you his name because this is a secret. You know, this is like the, the Freemason, like the, uh, like the Illuminati, you know, the Illuminati. You know, we can't be, you know, telling you who this person is. They made all these millions of dollars selling Richard Mill watches. But he says right now they're dead in water. That's right. Richard Mill watches are dead in water. That's what he's telling me, that Richard Mill watches are dead in water. And he also is telling me that Richard, Richard Mill watches are, are just the same as a Hublet watch. They're brothers. They're brothers. Richard Mill watches and Hublet are brothers. The only difference he tells me, Juan, is that one doesn't have meat left in the bone and the other one had some meat left in the bone because the watch is just dropping, dropping and dropping. Richard Mill watches, he's telling me, are dropping every day. But then he tells me the real big problem. He says, but I have a big problem. I have like 35 of those pieces. I have like 35 Richard Mill watches and I can't even give them away now. I can't even give, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, he's telling me, I'm trying to sell them at my cost. And it's a hard time for me to sell them at my cost right now. You know, I, and he tells me, it's a better investment for these new, newbie rich crypto millionaires, if they're still out there, because they, they're not out there no more, but if they are, you're better, he's telling me, you're better off buying a Hublet, buying an example for $20,000, and the day you're gonna sell it, you sell it for seven. So seven, you bought it for 20, and you sell it out for seven, you lost $13,000. You're better off doing that than buying a richer mill for $400,000. And the day you wanna sell it, sell it for $100,000. That's what's happening with Richard Mill watches at this moment, he's telling my friend. My friend that made millions of dollars selling Richard Mill is telling me right now that Richard Mill watches are dead in water dead and floating like this that's right and he's telling me you're better off buying a hublet you're safer you lose just probably if you you pay 20 for hublet you're gonna sell it out for seven you lost 13 versus uh a richer mill that you bought for 400 and you're gonna sell it now the day you want to sell it four hundred thousand dollars three hundred thousand dollar loss against a thirteen thousand dollar loss and i'm telling you he's telling me both watches are about the same thing. The only thing is that the Richard Mill has going for them is that they say it has this new material called, like you call it one, the STD, the infection. That's right. I don't call it the MT MTP. I call it the STD. That's what I call it. That's what that Richard Mill watch has. That new material that they say NTP, it has the STD infection. <laughs> so he's telling me that Richard Mill watches are dead dead in water. So if you guys are thinking of buying Richard Mill watches, think about my friend's story. He made a lot of money. He made a lot of money. He made millions of dollars, as he's told me. But he has 35 Richard Mill watches, and he can't give them away, not even at cost, at what he bought them for, because they're dead. They're dead in water. So that's the story of my friend. He made a lot of money, like I told you again. You know, from driving an ES350 Lexus to driving a Ferrari and his wife from driving a C-Class Mercedes-Benz to driving a Bentley. And now he's telling me his story that he has all these Richard Mill watches that he doesn't know what to do. And you know what else he told me? He told me, he says to me, Juan, to be honest, I made this money and I'm happy that I made all this money, but I believe the Richard Mill watches are gonna end up being exactly like you. I hope you like this story, this story that I talked to you about, the story that I told you. Um, like I said again, I, I can't be telling you my friend's name because this is, uh, you know, this is uh, Illuminati stuff, you know, Mason stuff. You know, we can't be doing that. You know, we can't be telling you who it is. I wish I can tell you who it is so you can go buy his thirty-five. Uh, Richard Mill watches, but I can't do that. Well, I hope you learned something from Richard Mill watches where they're heading to. They're dead in water, like my friend is telling me. He made all this money, but he knows. He knows that this watch is basically, it's just, um, 
uh, a passing by fever, that the fever is going to get cold. Oh, no, no, it's getting cold already. So be very careful if you are thinking of purchasing a Richard Mill watches. He's telling me they're dead in water and he has 35 of them to sell. I believe him. I believe everything he had to tell me. I believe that watch is just a big, big fad that is about to die out any moment. Um, I hope you enjoy what I had to say about my friend's story on Richard Mill watches. Be careful. That watch is dead in the backyard pool floating face down like this. Okay? All right, gentlemen, so let's go into the watch market update. My first watch, my first watch market update is the Pate Felipe 5990 Rose Gold. You know, I told you that this watch three months ago was somewhere in the $295,000. This watch was at one moment over $500,000. And three months ago, I told you the watch was like $295,000. Gentlemen, today, and I mean today, this watch, this Rose Gold Pate Felipe 5990, unbelievable time machine, unbelievable time machine. Do not pay, and I mean, do not pay more than $245,000 in dropping. And dropping, dropping, dropping a little more. That's right. The Pate Felipe 5990 is dropping faster than Bill Clinton's pants in an Arkansas farmhouse. That's right. You don't have to believe me. Drop, 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 drop. That's what I got to tell you. Pate Felipe. That's my number one watch market update. My number two watch market update is the Richard Mill RM004 V3. That's right, the gray. Unbelievable, the gray edition. Only 15 pieces made of this watch. Only 15 pieces made of this watch. You know, the comps of this watch are over $450,000. Over $450,000. I'm not going to tell you to buy a Richard Mill. I'm not going to tell you to buy it. But if you do are, if you're planning to buy a Richard Mill, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, do not pay. Do not pay more for that Richard Mill RM004 Gray Edition no more than $290,000. Drop, 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 drop. Drop, drop. And dropping. Dropping. This watch is in a fish pond. This watch is in a fish pond. Flapping, flapping, flapping like a fish. I'm telling you, this watch is dead. Dead in water. Dead in water. Just letting you know what's going on. The watch market is dead. Number three watch, that's right. It's the Rolex Sky Dweller with the blue dial, stainless steel. The Rolex Sky Dweller, stainless steel with the blue dial. This watch was at $30,000. The Oyster one, you know the Oyster man? Not the Jubilee, the Oyster, the Oyster. Slider use condition material watch. Don't pay more, and I mean don't pay more for that Rolex Sky Dweller Blue Dial Stainless Steel. Don't pay more than $19,000. Drop, drop. Drop. A little more. And drop it. The watch market is dead. You heard me. Don't do it. Don't do it. My next watch is the Adamas Piquet Royal Oak 50th Anniversary Chrono, stainless steel, blue dial, unbelievable watch, unbelievable watch. This this is sickening. This is just what I'm gonna tell you now is sickening. I'm telling you, it just makes me. Oh my god, this is just bad. This watch at one moment, this 50th anniversary blue dial Chrono 41 millimeter, unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable watch. I mean. Unbelievable watch. I just, I think about it and I go, wow. Unbelievable. Reference 26240. 26240. That's the reference on that watch. 50th anniversary. 
That watch was all the way up to three hundred thousand dollars. Unbelievable. The watch market is dead. The watch market is broken. The watch market is broken like broke back mountains anus. You know what that is? It's broken. You're not gonna believe that watch was at three hundred thousand dollars. Don't pay, and I mean don't pay. Don't pay more than sixty-seven thousand dollars for that watch. Drop, 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 drop. Drop, 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 drop. Drop a little more. The watch market is dead. Dead. You do whatever you want with your money. It's your money. You do whatever you want with your money. But the watch market is dead. My fifth watch is the Adamas Piquet 15400 stainless steel. The 15400 stainless steel AP Royal Oak. Discontinue. This watch was all the way up there at $50,000. Unbelievable. Don't pay for that watch. And I mean, do not pay more than $28,000 and dropping, and dropping, and dropping a little more. The watch market is broken. The watch market is broken. Can somebody fix the watch market? I don't know. I love watches, but the watch market is broken. Don't do it, it's broken. My sixth watch, my sixth watch is the Pate Philippe Stainless Steel Nautilus 5712. Unbelievable time machine too, unbelievable. This watch was over, I'm just gonna be nice, it was just over $150,000. $150,000. For this Pate Philippe 5712 stainless steel. Unbelievable machine. But the watch market is dead. The watch market is dead. Don't pay, and I mean don't pay for that used slider condition watch. Don't pay more than $83,000. Don't pay more than $83,000 because the watch market is dropping faster than Bill Clinton's pants in an Arkansas farmhouse. The watch market is dead and broken. And at this moment, nobody can fix it. The watch market is dead. Well guys, that's your watch market update for this week. And I'm gonna to talk to you about the consignment business just a little bit, all right? So let's go into my consignment now. So someone told me that this makes zero sense, that how does a watch consignment help a Muppet boiler room sell watches? And I'm gonna to explain to you, I'm gonna to explain to you how this makes sense. I'm gonna tell you how it makes sense, you know? I'm gonna tell you how you guys sending in your consignment watches to a Muppet Boiler Room Secondary Great Watch Channel helps them sell their watches. That's right. It helps them sell their watches. And here it goes. Gentlemen, it makes perfect sense to me. That's right. It makes perfect sense to me. If the Muppet Boiler Room Secondary Great Watch Market Channels collect and control as many watches as possible, they have a better chance of maintaining some control of the prices. That's right. That's right. They have some control of the prices now. Every time a Muppet channel gets a watch on consignment, they will not be competing against the sale of the watch. That's right. They won't be competing against the sale of the watch. Last, many of the Muppet Boiler Room watch channels are selling at a loss now, but many end users are getting burned even worse because they pay more for their watches than the Muppet channels. So if the Muppets pay $30,000 and the end users paid $35,000 some months ago, setting the consignment price now at $35,000 
while they sell their own below $35,000 makes them less lessen their loss. And at the same time, it gives them a way to falsely price signaling higher market prices with the more expensive consignment pieces. Now, when all their own stock is sold, they will go back to their lollipop suckers who have watches on consignment with them and tell them to lower their prices. Gentlemen, the watch market is dead in a backyard pool and floating face down. That's right. Stop being lollipop suckers. The watch market is dead. The watch market is dead in a backyard pool and floating face down. That's right. The watch market is dead. Like this. Well, gentlemen, I really hope you enjoy what I had to say this week. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like my video. And like I say every week, take care and brush your hair.